What's up, Dash Bash? It is so cool to be here. Um, yeah, thank you for having me. I'm so honored, and I can't believe who I just followed. So <laughs> it's going to be a tough act to follow. But um, yeah, I'm psyched to be here. Um, so today, I, I want to talk to you guys about North Star and what that means. Um, and so you all probably know the concept of a North Star is that there's this one singular guiding light in the sky, and the actual North Star uh, Polaris is above the North Pole, right? So no matter where you are on the planet, it always looks like it's in the same place. Um, and so this concept of a North Star is nothing new, and in fact, it shows up in tons of cultures. In Greek mythology, the goddess Athena said to, uh, she was like a warrior goddess, uh, and she would slay a bad guy and then take his eye and put it in the sky. Uh, and then that eye became the North Star and that was how many heroes uh, would navigate. The Vikings used the concept of the North Star to navigate the sea um, because it was vast and there was no landmarks. You couldn't say bang or right at the Dunkin' Donuts, right? Um, <laughs> so they used the North Star to navigate the sea. And then in pop culture, um, obviously we have Taylor Swift who is our North Star for... <laughs> Authenticity, female empowerment, this is my friendship bracelet. Um, my daughter and I were at the concert, and then there's a couple of my newfangled teammates, Kayla and Kendall, who made amazing custom outfits, and uh, actually Kayla made me this bracelet. Uh, so Taylor Swift is like the pop culture North Star for me anyway. Uh, <laughs> but in our industry, right, we work in this industry where it can get really easy to forget about your own personal North Star because clients tend to do that for us, right? So you get lost in the weeds. You're like, oh my God, I'm like, I have to get this render done by five o'clock. That's my North Star right now, right? Or like, is this on brand? And you labor all of those details that make you artists, like you know, thinking about the pacing and the lighting and all the amazing things. Um, and sometimes you can forget about your own big picture. Um, and it's like, it's, it's tricky because it's like those small details that you really care about can sometimes cause you to overlook the things you care about the most. Um, so that's why it's really important to have a professional North Star, um, especially when you earn your money being creative. It, you know, your, your creativity is how you make your living, right? But it's also your art and it also like comes from within you. So, you want to think about your own North Star that can guide you um, as you're moving from project to project, so you're always eventually moving in the right direction. Um, so a lot of people will define it like this, right? You ever work on a job and you're like, oh, this is probably my North Star, right? You're like so amped on the creative, you're getting paid, the client's awesome, the creative kicks ass, it's like some you know, influencer that you have a huge um, crush on is in it, it's progressive, it's inclusive, it's hitting all your values, and you're like, yes, this is the epitome of my North Star. Um, and then you think like, okay, so just make every job like that. It's like, no, no, <laughs> like not every job is gonna be like that, right? Um, and you probably won't make any money if you're limiting yourself to just those North Star jobs. Um, so what's the reality? Um, the reality is that it probably will take years to develop your own North Star and figure out exactly what that was. Um, but my goal today is to maybe give you a little bit of the framework that I've learned um, as we developed the newfangled North Star so that maybe it won't take you the decade plus <laughs> that it took me to develop it. When I first started Newfangled, I started in 2009, so it's been a minute. Um, and when I first started, I didn't have like a plan or any money or like a lot of contacts. Uh, I probably actually had no right to be starting a studio at that time, to be honest. Um, and so my North Star was like quite literally get this studio off the ground by any means possible, like by hook or by crook. Like I just want to have cool artists working here and I want to have a rad space and um, I want to have a good time and have cool clients. Uh, and that usually meant taking crappy jobs for the money or taking things that had like no financial payoff because I thought it might lead to something better. Um, so my only North Star at this point was like, be successful. So if there's a project that I thought would help my reputation as a studio, I would take it. 
And if there was a project that was embarrassingly uncool and I wanted literally no one to know that I was even working on it, but it paid money, <laughs> I would also take it. Um, and I began to become the person that said yes, no matter the request. And I was actually really resonating with the talk this morning about things that you say no to, um, because I was like the yes girl, like, yep, no matter what you want. And I would say yes, and I would be so happy about it. Um, but once you get to be known as the person who says yes to anything, uh, the types of questions and requests that start to come in will become less and less aligned um, with what is best for you, and in my case, what was best for Newfangled, my studio. Um, so, <laughs> it started looking and feeling a little bit like this. Um, you know, in the beginning, it was more like, you know, we've all been through it, right? Like clients not holding up their end of the bargain, and they say they're gonna do something, they don't, and then you have to do it. Um, expecting my 24-7 availability, unrealistic deadlines, assuming I would work through the night, like just stay all night long, and I actually would, um, and I would pretend to be happy about it. <laughs> I'd be like, well, that was so cool. It's so nice to wake up here. Um, <laughs> uh, I smiled through a series of training videos. I was working on training videos, you guys, uh, and I would say yes to everything, and I had this client who was he was, ver I mean, she was straight up verbally abusive. And one time on set, he walked up to one of my producers and he started snapping in her, it next to her ear to tell her to hurry up. So we were a little behind the schedule, right? That's your reaction. We're like, oh! um, so like, I'm just like, what do I do, right? Like this guy had six figure budgets and I needed to pay my staff. Um, you know, <laughs> and I'm starting to feel like this, uh, and I have to ask myself, like, what do I do? Do I stand up to him? Do I say, like, do not treat us like that, and it's not worth it, and by the way, these are training videos. No one cares. Um, what did I do? Did I draw a line in the sand, put a stake in the ground? No. <laughs> I um, completely... Uh, just like ghosted him basically and was like, all right, like I'm gonna get paid and I'm never gonna say anything about it. I'm gonna feel terrible about myself. Uh, and, uh, but I'm gonna overcompensate now completely in the other direction. Um, so, so like that was like, all right, cool. I made some money. I was able to hire some people. We were able to get some equipment. We moved into a studio. Um, and then I was like, all right, so forget making any money. We're exhausted, we're burnt out, like we're gonna swing totally in the other direction and we're gonna make this documentary um, about a paraplegic skydiver and we're gonna sink all of our money into it and all of our time and all of our passion and effort um, and it's gonna be awesome. And it was, like it was awesome, but we didn't, like not only did we not make money, we spent a lot of money to, to do it. Um, <laughs> uh, but what it did, it was like it kind of healed us and it healed me with creativity um, from that really toxic job prior. Uh, Ta-da, here's the movie, um, and it's really old now, but it's on Amazon Prime, you can check it out. Um, <laughs> but, you know, essentially what I was learning was that there's no balance, there's no balance in this industry, and that's just how it is, right? Um, it's creativity or money, you have to pick one. And so you can go for the money, get treated like crap, like make some money, and then you swing in the other direction, and you do something creative so that you fuel your soul and you feel better, and then you go get make, make money again. Um, and I latched onto the phrase, one for the meal, one for the real. Um, how many of you guys heard that phrase before? Yeah. I latched onto that so hard, I got a neon sign printed up in our office. One for the meal, one for the real. And when we'd get a job that was like, ugh, nobody wants to do this, but we gotta get paid, we'd light up the one for the meal sign. <laughs> and when we were doing something that was really fun and awesome, we'd light up the real sign. And then every once in a while, you got to light up both sides of the sign. And that was the best. Um, but the truth is, one for the meal, one for the real, like really actually was paying off. We started to get some big time clients um, working through the night, uh, as much as I don't recommend it, does like make people feel like, yo, this person could be counted on um, and maybe I also owe them a favor. So crappy jobs started to lead to crappy jobs but with really big name brands. <laughs> uh, and then those jobs started to grow in scope and 
we started to kind of have a good reputation and, and people were knowing us. Um, so Virgin, Google, Harvard, Bank of America, we were working directly with them. Um, also can't uh, emphasize enough like skipping over <laughs> the reps and the ad agencies and trying to work direct is, is the way, especially with tech. Um, so anyway, it was all working out, right? We were making money, the staff was growing, things were cool. And then this brief comes in, and it's like the best brief. We're gonna work with, I'm not gonna tell you the client, but we're gonna work with an A-list celebrity, and the concept was that we were gonna interview this A-list celebrity, and then we were gonna interview regular people, and then we were gonna cut it together. And so it was like a mashup. And the, the <laughs> while we were there, the topic, by the way, was health. It was like, it was just about like your mental and physical health. Um, and while we were there, the client said to me like, hey, why don't we interview you? Um, it, so why don't you get on camera? And I was like, oh, okay, I hadn't been expecting that. Um, but we flipped positions and I hopped in front of the camera and she interviewed me. And one of the questions that she asked was who influences your health? Um, so I was like, oh, well, that's easy, that's my wife. Um, here's my wife, uh, she's lovely. Uh, and uh, I, yeah, so I said, well, my wife influences my health. I thought that was a pretty good answer, so I, make it, I put it in the rough cut. Um, so we've got the A-list celebrity, a bunch of regular people, including me, and I mentioned in the rough cut that my wife influences my health. And um, we send it off, the feedback comes in, and it was, <laughs> oh, still it like hits you in the gut to see it. This was 2012. Um, so like, yes, she was my wife, like technically, but legally, like it wasn't even, you know, recognized yet. Um, so anyway, the, the V1 feedback is like, edit yourself out of the video. Um, or put yourself in where you don't mention your wife, because, you know, and the clients will always say like, well, I'm cool, you know that I'm cool and everything, but like, not everybody is, so <laughs> let's just like cut it out. Um, so I've, now I have another opportunity to stand up for myself, right? So what did I do? Did I like, <laughs> did I like really give it to them? And like, you know, did I say, I'm not gonna do that. I don't care if you're an A-list celebrity and a big brand, like I have self-respect and I have respect for my wife. <laughs> no, <laughs> I didn't. I actually just told them that no problem and <laughs> the cut will be up later today. And then I just like went in the bathroom and cried a lot. Um, and then I sat with my editor and helped her edit it out. <laughs> um, so that was terrible. I never worked with them again after that. Um, and I think it was an unspoken thing. They knew why. <laughs> um, but anyway, time marches on. Um, lots of awesome stuff is happening. Uh, we're, again, like continuing to get better and better work. And um, we're hiring more people. We get like an even better studio. Um, but small amounts of crappy stuff like that like still were happening where it felt like I needed to disrespect my values um, in order to get this studio off the ground. And then the more you grow too, the more people you hire and rent you have and you know, snacks that you wanna stock in the kitchen and all that stuff, like you have all these expenses and it can be scary to say no or it can be scary to stand up for yourself because you have all these obligations and you need those funds. Um, but because things were going so well, I started to gain a lot more confidence in myself. And the thing that the confidence gave me was the ability to set boundaries. Um, and after multiple <laughs> things like that happened, um, I decided, you know what, I need to set some boundaries. Um, but because I am who I am, I had to do it in a way that was um, ridiculous. Um, <laughs> I was like, you know what, like, <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so I did it in like a very public way. <laughs> um, and I don't know if any of you guys have seen it, but we put out this film in 2016 called Untapped. And um, thank you. Um, or 2017, maybe, I don't know. It was like, it was a long time ago. Um, and I told my story, I told this story about how it was a whole other like crappy thing where I had cast a gay couple um, and I was reading the script out loud in a boardroom and when I mentioned the gay couple, like everyone in the boardroom started laughing because they thought that I was kidding. 
<laughs> and I was like, oh, cool, and like, yeah, whatever. So I decided I was gonna tell my story in a film, um, and not only tell my story, but also talk about other underrepresented communities. Um, and so I got some really interesting people from like Pinterest, Google, um, RISD, some, some like, you know, really renowned people from different communities. And we talked about things like racial bias. Um, we talked about, um, you know, accessibility for people, you know, with disabilities. And like when you're designing tech, um, you need to think about that it's all different types of people are gonna use it and how do we make things accessible. <clears throat> So we told lots of different stories and we told my story. Um, it was really cool because um, it got played at conferences and motionographer picked it up, <laughs> which was awesome. Um, and what I didn't realize that I had done um, is like publicly create a North Star. I didn't do that part on purpose. I was just kind of like <laughs> angry um, that these types of things kept happening and wanted to make a film. And, the amazing artists at my studio wanted to make a film, and so we did. Um, so unintentionally, I kind of updated my North Star to like, okay, it's one for the meal, one for the real, yes, but also some ethical boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> and I never uh, let anyone treat us like that again, by the way. Um, thank you. Um, all right, so we're going on our journey, right? And at the beginning, when I would think about business results, it was really like, <laughs> make enough money so that I can hire cool people and have a cool space. <laughs> like, that was the goal. Um, and as we matured as a studio, um, we start to learn more and more, really from our client Google, um, about creative effectiveness and what it means to make something that not only looks cool, but that also gets business results for the clients. Um, and we started to kind of be a leader in the creative effectiveness space and we got this contract with Google where we were helping them set um, the best practices for different platforms like YouTube. And so when YouTube would go out um, to big agencies and say, hey, by the way, here are the best practices, you should be doing these creative things, a lot of that was coming from our studio. Um, and so that was really cool and we got awesome at it. Um, and so, we started to go a little bit overboard. This is <laughs> an actual image of uh, a neuroscience imaging at Nielsen. We were like going as far as like putting these like brainwave hats on people and like seeing what happened with the creative when they were watching it when they're brainwave. So anyway, we went a little overboard with creative effectiveness. <laughs> um, but then we realized like, okay, well, I, we didn't realize at this time, this is all in retrospect, I'm realizing this. Uh, but at the time, like our North Star once again had been sort of updated, right? It's now one for the meal, one for the real, plus some ethical boundaries, and it has to be effective. <laughs> um, and so this is what was going on with us. The, the work with Google, um, it really put us on the map and we started like, not started, but like cons the work was consistently cool. Like there were no more real crappy jobs anymore after that. Um, and we were like traveling the world, this us in Paris. Uh, we built out another studio, this one like we built it, um, like polished the concrete floors and it was really cool. Um, and we were just having a great time. We were like traveling all over the place um, and just doing amazing work and it felt like the Rocky training montage of happiness. <clears throat> And during this time, my creative director was like, hey, I hate our brand. In fact, he, <laughs> he's, he's in the audience here today, he, he made a 92-page deck on how bad our brand was and presented it to me. Uh, <laughs> to which I completely ignored him. I was just like, yeah, thank you for this presentation, but like, I was in love with it because it was like my baby and I wasn't uh, gonna make any changes. So things are going great. Easy to ignore that our brand was kind of like dysfunctional in a lot of ways. Um, and then the dumpster fire of 2020 hits um, and the whole world is reassessing everything, like not just us. Um, at this point, we're like 11 years into um, running Newfangled. Um, so it's pretty like, you know, we kind of know who we are. Um, but we were like, we know who we are, but we've never really distilled it down. We've never really taken the time 
to take that laundry list of things that maybe we are and put it together in almost like a brief, you know? And I still got Corey in my ear <laughs> saying like, we really need to rebrand. Uh, <laughs> the logo is so ugly. Um, and so I look back at like, you know, the values of the company and it's like, get the studio off the ground by any means possible. Say yes to everything. Get a good reputation, make money, one for the meal, one for the real. Actually, stop saying yes to everything. Respect yourself and others. Uh, be inclusive, the work must work. Creative effectiveness or death. Um, and so like, we went through this kind of laundry list of things. Um, and we brought in Stephen Kelleher um, to help us redesign the logo. If you guys ever seen his work, he's amazing. Um, and we distilled down internally what was important to us. And we went through this whole process internally where all of the employees, and there are about 30 of us at that point, um, would write down, you know, what do you think the values of this studio are? <clears throat> you know, what, um, what does Newfangled mean to you? How would you describe us? And we sort of took all of that input and distilled it down to what we thought we were. Um, and uh, Corey sent me this email. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and from all of that and working with Steven and doing all of that introspective work, our new logo was born. And uh, it looked a lot better, um, so he was right. Um, <laughs> the logo is um, really meaningful because it, it has a lot of things going on that are awesome. Like the star is a sparkle, which we're newfangled. It really puts the new into it, right? Um, the shape of the N kind of feels a little bit like a rainbow to me, which obviously I care about. Um, and then it also gives this uh, idea of an eye, like we're blinking or it's like that human artistic element to it. But the coolest thing about our logo is that it's grounded in our North Star. <clears throat> and as part of this process, we developed the newfangled North Star, and it takes all the stuff that was on that list, and it distills it down to what's actually important to us. Um, so this is it here. And I'm gonna go into each one of these points and talk to you about what it means. But first I wanna mention that it's actually a really incredible tool to have a North Star for yourself. Um, because North Stars are not, um, they're not sort of one-sided, there's a lot of depth to them, and there's a bit of a stretch to them, so that you can set at different times in your life or at different points in a project, different amounts of weight to different things that are important to you. Um, so the Newfangled North Star has been an incredible tool to help us decide what projects to take, which clients to chase, when to donate our time and resources for a good cause, when to hire, fire, and it has happened, uh, God forbid, lay off. Um, <laughs> mostly when to speak up, like when to say something and not you know, just take it. Um, and it's helped us to guide a lot of conversations um, with each other, um, with our clients, and even like the one that we're having today. Um, in fact, we created a North Star team at Newfangled, um, and it's the department heads of all the different departments, and we meet and we sort of analyze things sometimes, <clears throat> and we'll say like, hey, we have a North Star issue if, <laughs> if, if we feel like something's going on that doesn't sort of meet our guiding light. So it's been a big part of our company, company culture. Going into like the points of the star, business results needs to be at the foundation of everything that we do um, because that's why people hire us. Um, and so like I said, when I started, it was really about business results for us. It was about like making money. Um, but business results, as I've learned and as we've matured as a studio, is really about the results for the clients um, and that creative effectiveness piece of it, making sure that the work works. Um, and then the top of the star is creativity and innovation. And the placement of those two points of the star is actually really intentional. The bottom being business results, that's foundational, right? But then the top is creativity and innovation. You're gonna find there's a push-pull between those two things. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later, but there's gonna be a push-pull between creativity and business results. You don't wanna make stuff that looks cool for the sake of it looking cool, unless it's a personal project. Um, and you don't only wanna be worried about the business results. You have to make sure that you're paying attention to your craft uh, and respecting your craft in that way. So you know, when we think about creativity and innovation for our clients, that's pushing the work forward. Um, but we want to push ourselves forward as well. 
Um, an example of this push-pull <clears throat> is recently we had an opportunity to develop an AR filter for uh, Google. They hadn't done an AR filter before, and so they decided the best thing to do was to hire a studio who also hadn't done an AR filter before to release their first one. Uh, and so I'm really good at saying yes. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we, we analyzed that push-pull of creativity and innovation, like let's figure out how to do an AR filter, and, um, and business results, uh, which was we would probably lose money on it. Uh, and we did it, and it was really cool, and it, and it felt like a moment where we were really utilizing our North Star. Um, the left and the right of the North Star are the anchors. These are your non-negotiables. This is the stuff that like, you know, there's a push-pull between the top and the bottom, but the left and the right, if it doesn't hit these things, you know, we're not taking the job. Or if it doesn't hit these things, there needs to be a conversation. We have to speak up. The left side is about respect and inclusion. Um, now that goes for how we treat each other too. Like being respectful toward one another, um, you know, a, an artist in the way that they talk to a producer, not to assume that the producer doesn't know something or the producer, you know, recognizing the time and effort that it takes to make a change. Like this is about respect no matter what um, role you have in the studio. Um, and then inclusion is, you know, it's one of our tenants of our company culture of how can we make sure that we're being inclusive on everything that we do. Um, but it's also about representation um, on screen and off. So who we work with, um, but who we put on the screen is so important to us. And I think that if you look at our work, we're really proud of how overall inclusive it is. I think, <laughs> thank you. It's the type of things that, you know, clients may ask for it, but if they don't, um, you want to make sure you're delivering on that anyway, because we have so much power as people in the advertising industry to put people on screen who may not otherwise be. And if you think about a little kid out there, um, you know, maybe who is hard of hearing, and they never see anybody on TV who's hard of hearing being successful, subtly they may think, well, I can't be successful either. But it's so impactful and so important that when you take people of different ability levels, different um, races, ethnicity, um, you know, the whole pendulum of uh, neurodiversity, um, gender, <clears throat> sexual orientation, and make sure that you are using your power as artists to be inclusive. Um, so if you're an illustrator, don't feel powerless, like, well, I don't have that decision, right? Recently, um, recently we put a, a Dexcom on someone's arm, which is, a, which is an insulin pump if you have diabetes. Um, right, or, or putting a hearing aid. And it might be subtle things, like these can be in, almost in, in, invisible disabilities. Um, but doing things like that, you know, even when you're illustrating characters, like always having that in your head is really important to us, and I just wanna throw that out there for something you guys could think about too. And then the last thing about respect and inclusion is like going back to what I said, like it's about how our clients treat us. Um, you need to work with people who respect you uh, or it's never gonna feel good. Um, and I'm happy to report now, I don't work with any of those scumbags <laughs> that I did earlier. <laughs> our clients are really awesome um, and really supportive of us um, in every way, so it's great. Um, and then on the right-hand side of the star, the other sort of anchor is forward progress. And I mean that in every sense of the word. If taking a job is gonna give us access to, you know, a cell scene and there's some people on staff who really wanna be doing more cell, like, let's take the job, you know? Let's let them have access to that type of work that they wanna do. Um, it could be someone who's like at the associate producer level and it's taking a job that, you know, maybe isn't the most complex job, but let's just take it because maybe this is the first job they can manage on their own. So thinking about it in terms of progress of the individual careers of the people at Newfangled, um, but also for our clients and for society, again, making sure that we're being representative. Um, and we have this whole initiative called, if you guys can check it out, it's called Nothing About Us Without Us, um, which is a phrase that was started by the disability community, um, but really applies to 
any sort of, you know, community that is underrepresented. So making forward progress in that way means that when you represent someone, you also have to include that person. So if we're gonna, um, you know, tell the story of an Inuit from Northern Canada, then we need to have an Inuit from Northern Canada consulting on the vibe. Um, and that's all about <clears throat> that forward progress. Um, so yeah, here's a really artful illustration of the North Star. And it was such a relief um, to finally distill our values because like I said, more than a decade had gone by and it, it did feel a little all over the place. Um, and you know, that relief um, and that excitement about it, of course, uh, led us to make a film about it. So I'm gonna play that now. Picture this bunch of artists and business people boosting your brand through campaigns that are as inclusive as they are effective. That, my friend, is Newfangled Studios. We're a creative production agency living by a North Star. The foundation is business results. It's like a VIP lounge for our in-house strategists and producers to live out their dream of delivering KPI-crushing campaigns that work hard and look damn good doing it. The looking good part, that's where the artists fit in. The newfangled designers, writers, animators, and editors who craft thumb-stopping visuals like this. And yeah, there's always gonna be a push-pull between creativity and business results. But it works because all of us share similar values. We use storytelling and design as a vehicle to combat stereotypes and shed light on underserved communities, and believe that modern advertising can push brands and society forward. It's these four points that let us live up to the definition of our name. Different from what you're used to, objectively new. We are Newfangled Studios. Thank you, and I'm just beaming too because there are so many people who touched this, um, and you can see the, all the different styles blending together, um, and, and everybody from junior people to very senior people at the studio um, you know, had their fingerprint on it, and so that was really huge. Um, you can scan this QR code, and it's gonna bring you to a PDF that has like a behind the scenes on our website. Um, and I just, it's really important to me that if we're gonna play this, that we recognize all of the incredible artists um, who worked on it. So go ahead and scan that and you can pull it up and maybe um, you know, at lunch, which is right after this, you can look through it. Okay, so here's what I wanna do now. I wanna take a few minutes and reflect back on ourselves and think about what is your North Star. Um, as artists, as business people, it's so important to have a North Star. Um, and if you can start thinking about it sooner rather than later, it will help you navigate situations when maybe you otherwise wouldn't know what to do. So the first thing I want you to think about is what is your push-pull? All right, I'm gonna give you like 20 seconds to think about that, and there's mics over here. And I would love to have some volunteers tell me what their push-pull is. So what are the two things that are extremely important to you, but sometimes one takes from the other? Um, and I've talked to you about the newfangled North Star, but I've also thought about it for my own self, and you know, I am not newfangled, right? I can have my own personal North Star on top of it. Um, and for me, that push-pull tends to be uh, my family, like the time that I spend with my kids and my wife, and making sure that I'm really prioritizing these years when they're young. So that like ends up being the foundational piece. Um, and then all the things that I do with work um, and, and like, you know, being an artist and a creative is the top. And I do find that like those things are a push pull. Like coming here to this conference for me was taking time away from my family to be here and I had to think about, you know, do I wanna do that? Um, and yeah, I did, I wanna come here and connect with this community, um, but it meant being away from my kids for a couple of days. So that's my push-pull, uh, is my family and my career. And um, I would love if anybody would volunteer to tell me maybe what their push-pull is. And there's mics there and there. 
No one? Yeah, that, I mean, that's the, I got the you. thank you. <laughs> um, thinking about it, for me, my push-pull is like doing personal development while also like staying alive. <laughs> and I say that like, like earning money, but also like mental health and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think those are what I would consider my push-pull. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, of course. Yes. Thanks, Ben Paul. Uh, I firmly agree with like the push pull between like career and family, but then I'd say like in addition to that, like independence and relationships. Yeah. Like being my own person, but also being a part of another group or community or coworkers, whatever. Yeah. I just out of curiosity, are you freelance or at a studio? At a studio, but I just came from freelance. Okay. Yeah. So that's a push pull that you had to think about. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you. Uh, this is gonna sound weird, but uh, like being lazy, as in like not just relaxing. Hell yeah! I'm like a <laughs> lazy person. I like hanging out with my friends and playing video games and staying at home, and ordering in. And I genuinely like that in life. And also, I want to be a great artist. Yeah. And that's like a very hard dichotomy of like working hard versus like I want to live a life where I don't have to, which is maybe a lot. Oh, of I know what you can do. You can get a Westphalia van. <laughs> <laughs> And just work out of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, my heart's going like. Uh, so my push pull, I guess, is I love technology. I love working on my computer and building amazing things. But there's this feeling that I want to be yanked. I want to turn into a wolf and run into the forest and never see another computer again in my life. But I, I want both of that. Yeah. And I don't know exactly how to do it, but I'm trying. All right. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, I love that you guys are sharing. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Oh. Um, I was going to say for me, I feel like the push and pull is between like being established and growing roots and then wanting to experience whimsy and like chasing the butterfly kind of thing. It's, it's hard to like grow in a skill set and then be interested in so many different things for me. Yeah, and right on. Let's hear it. Uh, I have like a million. But one... That's what's hard, uh, right? That's yeah. what's hard about the, like narrowing it down. Uh, something I've been thinking about a lot lately is the kinds of boxes we get put into as artists and our limitations, what we're able to do as just individuals and how our work gets put out into the world and the consequences that has. Like, you know, your studio and your talk is so great because of all of the different ways your work impacts communities. So lately I've just been thinking about how, you know, what I can do as an individual to help the most amount of people live better lives. Right on. And I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> 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 all right, we'll take these last two. For me, it has very much been wanting to do as much for the people I care about in my life and propping them up as high as I can, but also remembering to take the time and do that for myself as well. And not just push my friends to like the front of the pile and forget about myself, and just like have that self-assurance to do that for myself as well, and not feel like doing that for myself is selfish. Yeah, absolutely, that's so important. <laughs> I just have to publicly just like gush over some stuff that you said. Okay. okay. <laughs> I was at a conference like years ago and it was like a very, I'm not gonna say which, but there was a, just a one type of person on stage and I approached and I said like, hey, like what are we, what are you guys doing to like pull in like more voices because I think we're, we're doing a lot of public work, especially if you're doing marketing 
and it's so impactful and everyone sees this stuff and we have ability to like be more inclusive. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so when you're talking, I'm like, oh, <laughs> don't scream. Yeah, we're <laughs> but, all empowered. Isn't that awesome? Like we all have power. But that's, I think that's one of my huge North Stars too, is like making sure that this, the work that I create, no matter like who's in charge, somehow infuse some more inclusivity because sometimes our clients don't see that. They don't have the ability or they just haven't faced some of the discrimination that yeah. maybe others have. So just like infusing that, I think my voice is shaking because I'm so excited <laughs> that you said that stuff. But yeah, that's definitely a huge one. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. And that's actually an incredible transition to the anchors, because I think, you know, for a lot of us, that probably is one of our anchors, like impacting community, or, you know, for us, it, you know, a lot of it is about combating negative stereotypes. Um, and so you've got to de define what pulls, um, but you also have to define what are your anchors, what are your non-negotiables. Um, and for me, this was the most important thing, because once I realized that there was a push-pull between creativity, innovation, and business results, but that those were a little bit mobile, um, but that I defined that respect and inclusion um, and forward progress were non-negotiable. I never had trouble speaking up again. I never had trouble calling the cell phone of a client being like, hey, like, can we just talk about what just happened? Um, or even doing it with employees. Um, and so, Defining those anchors of what's really important to you and it's so personal, um, but what are those things in your life that no matter what, no matter the job or you know what awesome thing it's gonna do for your demo reel or your reputation, it's just like a hard pass um, or at least it's a conversation um, to try to shift the mindset of maybe the person who was not um, acting in alignment with your values. So you, know, you really gotta um, define those for yourself as well. Um, so yeah, once you define these four things for yourself, that's how you build your own North Star, or that's how we did it anyway. Um, and I wanted to share that with you so that maybe it doesn't take you over a decade <laughs> to figure it out uh, as it did me. Um, thank you guys so much.